Hey guys, it's Spazman13579 here. I know you haven't heard me say that in probably, man, two years I think it's been since I made a video, but hey, making a video today and just gonna jump right into it. So today we're gonna take an old uh, branch line trains or, uh, when I say branch line, I mean roundhouse MDC kit. This is a 60 foot bulkhead flat car kit. Real basic, you know, not that good looking. It's a basic car. And we're gonna turn it into something that we can use on our modern layout. So let's get started. Okay, so this video is going to be kind of compromised into two different parts. First of all, we're going to work on the actual car itself by removing some of the old casting details, putting on better detail parts, changing the ends, weathering, painting, etc. And then the second part is going to be the load that we're going to put on this thing. Now, I know it didn't really happen in real life very often, if ever, but what I'm going to do, since I'm modeling in modern Detroit, Michigan, there's a lot of steel industry, or not a lot, but there's some steel industry left and they haul steel coils a lot, which are like the balled up or the rolled up steel coils. Here's a picture of them if you can tell what they are. But um, I'm gonna be putting four of those on each of these cars. I have six of them. So I'm gonna be putting four of those rolls on each of these cars and um, having those and I'll be making the mounting brackets and all that for them. But first of all, we're gonna be focusing on the actual car itself. And the first thing I'm going to address are these ends. Now in real life, you almost never saw these. It's just a blank end, just a, nothing on them. What I'm gonna be doing, like in this uh, picture, if you can kind of tell there, this has a wooden end to it. On this car, this is a prototype picture. It has a wooden end on there. So what I'm gonna be doing is taking this styrene that looks kind of like a wood pattern on there. I'm gonna be cutting it to shape and then painting, weathering it to match that picture so we can get some kind of better looking end on these things as compared to just that stock blank piece. Okay, so I got both these pieces cut here and they fit pretty well onto the ends of the cars. There's a little bit of um, overhang on the yellow part or the original part there, but um, I think it should be okay. In real life, I'm sure that would happen sometime or other. It was just because the little lines here didn't match up to that, so I just cut it one short. But um, next up is going to be with these is to paint and weather them to make them look somewhat like wood or maybe some somewhat aged wood. And um, after that, we'll mount them and go on to the next step. Okay, so this is actually a lot more simple than it looks like. It looks like it's real wood. I mean, it has a shine to it, but I can get rid of that very easily. But um, it came out extremely well. I'm very happy with it. But here's the original just for comparison, just white styrene plastic, same thing on the back of this. All I did was take some, I think this is burnt umber, yeah burnt umber paint right here and I dry brushed some onto a paper towel, it's right there, using a number two brush, doesn't really matter though, and I just um, took the brush and kind of went, in, I got a bunch of paint on the brush, not even really dry brushing, I went in between every crack and just filled up every crack in there with that burnt umber paint. And then after doing that, I went each line by line, so it did take a while, but line by line. And then after that, I just uh, took my finger and just wiped kind of the excess off, but I didn't wipe everything off because I want to keep that wooden look to it, or just the brown on the plastic. So I did that, and it came out really good. As you can see, you can really tell where the lines are in there. But um, after that, to get the um, kind of toned down effect, I got some AIM dark brown earth, I think it's just called brown earth weathering powder here. Just took a little tiny bit with a kind of stiffer brush like this one here and just went over everything. Make sure you go horizontal, not vertical. If you go vertical, it's gonna make it look like the wood grain is vertical and obviously it's not, it's sideways. So um, just do that. Then it'll come out really good like this. And then the line in the center, if you look at a real, or most uh, bulkhead flat cars with wooden ends like this, they have a white line in the center, most of, most of the time it's like a chalk line. Obviously I can't get a chalk line to be that thin. I was thinking about masking it off and dry brushing, but if I mask it off using masking tape, I was afraid to start peeling off this paint. So I did, I just used a real tiny, I think it's a double zero brush here, and basically dry brushed my way along with some white down the center line or what would be the center line of this um, wood here. And I'm really happy with how it came out, so now I'm just gonna duplicate this, and we're gonna put it onto the end, and it should look really, really good. So let us continue with the second one. Okay, so basically to explain better what I'm doing, get my number two brush here, or any somewhat bigger brush, got some paint on the end, and I'm just gonna go right in this line here 
fill it all the way up with paint. And just go line by line. You can do two at a time if you want. And just take your finger and just kind of wipe some of the excess off. Make sure to keep some of it there. Trying to get your fingerprints in there. It looks kind of strange. And so you get that. And then you just continue on with that process until you're happy with this. And then you can use the weathering powders to finish everything up. And if you mess up like I just did, or somewhat mess up, you can just take some more paint, put it on, and wipe it down again. So just like that, you're just going to do that. And I'll show you how you apply the weather, or, you know, weathering powders as well. And then with the powders here, get some powder on the brush like that. And just going to kind of start at the top here. You don't want to press too hard, it'll start to chip off the previous paint because this paint that I'm using, this, uh, Basics by Liquitex stuff does not stick to plastic well whatsoever So you just have to be careful with it until you get some kind of clear coat on there I'm just going to continue to do this all the way down the car or not the car the uh, piece of wood here or plastic I guess you should call it You can add more to some areas take some off of areas really doesn't matter as long as it looks somewhat realistic. Looks a lot better than stock, that's for sure. And now what you can do, you see there's a lot, quite a bit on there, as compared to this piece. So you can just kind of take your finger and uh, wipe some of it off. Get at least some of it off of there. It's a little bit better compared to that. So. I'm going to put the white line on this one, and we're going to mount them up to the car. Alright, so we got the ends done on this thing. Now I'm going to worry about weathering this part. What I'm basically going to do is just take some more of that burnt umber paint that I have, just very lightly dry brush it on there, and follow up with, again, some more of that uh, earth brown. But um, it should help tone down this bright yellow deck somewhat. I actually changed my mind. I'm actually going to use some of this real tie brown and just airbrush it on so we get a better, smoother effect on this as compared to dry brushing it. Okay, so I just toned down this a little bit with some real tie brown, which is a dark brown, and um, came out pretty good. I did the deck as well as the sides a little bit and the ends a little bit as well, just to again tone it down somewhat. But I'm going to be applying powders to that. And while I had my airbrush out and ready doing that, I did all the uh, wheel sets as well. These are Intermountain 36 inch semi-scale metal wheels. And uh, they roll really well, they work really good in these trucks. And um, they should work out good. I did the trucks as well, speaking of them. Now this is just a base coat, I haven't applied any um, rust or weathering powder to these yet, so they're going to look a lot better than that. And that's the same story when it comes to the couplers, which are right here. I did those as well. Just sprayed them with a very light coat of real tie brown, or any dark brown for that matter. And they come out really good looking. A lot more scale as compared to the, or a lot more realistic as compared to the stock um, glossy black metal and black plastic on these. One thing with these trucks, that roundhouse MDC had, uh, they had some really poor castings on there. You can kind of see in this brake wheel right here how they have a poor casting in there. Just make sure to take an X-Acto, just a number 11 X-Acto, and clean that up before you continue to paint it. If you paint it and then clean it up later, it comes out really strange, just bad looking. So just do it very first thing is to uh, clean that up and then paint it later. Just a little tidbit. So right now, I think we're going to go back to this with some powders and maybe do some more weathering on the sides because these still look pretty new on the sides so I think I might do some small streaking down the sides of these little tie down areas here. And on the ends, the stock um, ladders are yellow. They're this really bad looking molded yellow. They're not even painted yellow. So um, I'm going to paint them just flat black and then attach them. Same thing with the underframe here. I'm going to paint that flat black after I attach all the undercarriage assembly. And I'm going to get to that later because I might add some piping detail on there just to give it some more detail. But um, I'm going to continue on this and I'll get back to you in a second. Okay, so as you can see the deck is basically done. So to clear cut everything, obviously it'll take away that sheen on there. But um, 
just use weathering powders and add burnt umber paints on there as well. And on the sides, you can kind of see, it's not going to focus obviously, but um, got some lighter rust on the tie down points on there. So it looks kind of cool, as well as the normal powders. Now on the ends, didn't do too much. A little bit of powder, a little bit of dry brushing stuff, but um, it's going to be covered up by these ladders anyway, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. Otherwise, looking good. And next I'm going to be painting these ladders, well, cutting them out and then painting them. I'm going to paint those, as well as assemble the um, understuff for the undercarriage on the underframe and paint this flat black as well. Here's one thing that I noticed on this underframe. As you can see, I cut this notch out already right here, but this one's just stock. Because these Intermountain wheel sets are uh, 36 inch scale, the stock ones I think are like 33 or 32, so a little bit smaller. So when these turn on here, as you can see, it's going to hit that. On the top side, it's not going to hit it because I cut that away, but on the bottom side, it's going to hit it. So I'm just going to clear out the bottom section as well as the opposite side as well. All I'm doing is clearing out basically in the middle of that molding circle right there. Just going in the middle of that all the way down and just uh, cleaning everything up. So I'll notch that out and everything, so we should get some free rolling wheels. Alright, so I got the air um, brake stuff put on there. Got the brake wheel on here, got these cut out, cleaned up and everything. I'm also going to paint the coupler cover plates uh, flat black as well, just so it takes down that glossiness for it. So I'm going to paint these and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got all these parts painted now. I'm going to uh, glue these on and I'm going to actually weather them when they're on the car just to add some more weathering to the ends there, make sure everything looks good. And then after that, I guess I can install the um, weight, which goes just in beneath the two, the frame and the um, deck there, it goes between those two. Before I do that, if you ever make one of these cars, make sure that you get rid of this little knot just right here, because if you don't get rid of that, you'll have a big bow in the car, it'll look really bad. So just make sure you kind of cut that notch out, make it smooth, and then put your weight on. Otherwise it'll look strange. And then um, after all that, we're going to add the new stirrup steps to these things because these are molded in, not very good looking. So I bought some Titchy Train Group ones. I'm going to put those on. Well, drill the holes and then glue them in. And they come black, so I'm just going to keep them black. I'm not going to paint them. When we add the flat coat, it'll dull them down. So um, first thing we're going to do those glue those on and then put on the frame. Alright, so now I got the underframe installed there. I got the little notch at the bottom so that the chassis is perfectly flat. I put the truck sand couplers on just so I can mount everything perfectly. And um, it's continued to weather trucks as well, you can't really tell. But um, they are a little bit lighter brown in the spring and bearing area. Couplers are installed, they're um, number 158 whisker scale head couplers. And then the ends of the car are also on, and I'd say about fully weathered to the extent I'm going to take them to. There's the A end and the B end right there. Now I'm thinking about, I'm not too sure, but I'm thinking about cutting these off and putting in some Plano see-through metal ones. Not sure if I want to go all the way with that, but um, one thing I'm going to do right now actually is cut off these throw-up steps and put on these uh, Titchy ones. These are number 3047, and they're uh, angled ones. If you look at almost any of these cars in real life, they modern ones at least, they have the um, angled throw-up steps there. So just a number, I think 75 drill bit to install these. Just drill two holes, glue it in, and it should be perfectly set. So I'm going to do that, and we'll be pretty close to getting this thing done. Alright, so using my number 50 or no, number 75 drill bit, and I'm going to put the stirrup step in, drill those holes out, and the ones, the angle ones, the um, angle like the 45 degree angle, whatever that is, like a 60 degree angle, that goes towards the inside, so it's going to go like this, on this side it's going to go like that. So I'm going to install that, just glue it in, and it should fit in perfect. Okay, so all these stirrup strips are on there. Pretty easy installation. One problem I noticed with these things is that when you cut them out of the uh, sprue, they leave a little bit of a notch right there. It's kind of hard to get that off because it's so delicate that if you try to cut it afterwards, it'll just break it. But um, oh well, nothing too big. 
And then also I weathered the underframe as you can see, just powders is all I did on there. Just to tone it down basically, it's just compared to the standard black that it was, just to make it look a little bit better. And then also on the coupler box here, I painted the screw that holds it in black because when you flip these cars over like this, you can see that screw head pretty well, especially in good light. So I just painted it black so you didn't really notice the silver too much. But um, one other thing that I noticed, or I realized I'm going to do, I bought these uh, KD, they are air hoses that go on the ends of the cars. You just drill a small hole and then you can put the air hose in there. So I'm going to get those real quick, put them in either end of this car, and the car itself at that point should be done. Alright, so I got the air hoses and angle cocks on there. You can also see this little piece of wire that I have right here. Basically just simulating the line that's going between the actual air hose and the internals to the brake assembly. But um, I didn't continue it because I'm really not going to add that much de or that much more detail to it because over here there's no wire either. These are just by themselves. So um, that should be enough detail for me though. I ended up not putting on those see-through end walkways. Um, I think if I try to cut them up it's just going to take some of the rigidity out of there. So it might ruin something. But um, otherwise, I'm going to hit this up with a flat coat, flat clear coat, clear coat, <laughs> and I'm uh, going to see how it comes out. It looks really good to me so far for being a branch line, that's a branch line kit again, for being a roundhouse kit. So let's go. Alright, so excuse the mess in the background, but um, it is done. Well, the car part, at least, or the car portion is done. Happy with how it came out. The weathering is a little bit more heavy than it looks like on video here. Like the back here doesn't even look weathered whatsoever, but it is kind of strange how it shows up in the video. And I uh, got all the uh, brake airline hose details on there. Got the stirrup steps, got the KD-158s, and my, my wheel sets. Just about everything. And again, the side is weather. It just doesn't look like a video for some strange reason. And there's the A side. All right, thanks for watching this little video here. Hope you enjoyed it. It's probably actually longer than I expected, but oh well. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. I'll be putting out more videos, hopefully in the near future. I've just been so busy with everything. I'll make an explanation video of my new layout and everything that's been going on. So um, hope to see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.